Thanks for being here for the second video in my Yukon car camping trip. In this video, we're going to be camping right beside the Alaska Highway, as well as talking about car camping safety. My name is Susan, and I'm really glad you're here. If you've ever looked at a map showing the Alaska Highway, you may have noticed that it dips back down into British Columbia for a while. So we are getting closer to going back into BC on the Alaska Highway, then it comes back out again. We may end up spending the night back in BC tonight, I'm not sure, because the next place that is on iOverlander to spend the night is back in BC, so we'll have to see. This is where we're going to spend the night tonight. That is the highway right there. Because it looks like we're going to get some rain if you look at those dark clouds up there i didn't want to get too far off the highway down one of the side roads that there are quite a few of up here just in case i couldn't get back out again if it got that wet one of the roads that i took down looked like it had had a lot of water running down it the water had gone down that road and made quite deep ruts in the road and i didn't want to risk not being able to get out in the morning so I'm just gonna stay here it will be an easy run along that gravel road back to the highway and I checked out another place on the other side of the highway here just just down there it was another clearing but I figured there was somebody turning around on the road when I came this way and I thought, oh, I think they're probably gonna be coming back this way. So I was pulling out as they were pulling in. So we'll just let them have that spot. But still, this is quite a pretty little spot here. You can see there's a puddle there. So it has been raining, but just look at this. Isn't that pretty? going to spend the night here. It looks like this used to be the old highway because it's all built up there with rocks. Yep, that's how close the highway is. <laughs> the dogs had a walk when we were at Rancheria, which wasn't that long ago. It's now six something <laughs> and there are a bunch of gnats flying around here. But yeah, it really looks like we're gonna get a good dump of rain. So I would like to be inside and settled before that happens. But in the meantime, I'm gonna get the car set up, get the dogs out for a quick walk before it starts to rain. It looks like a disaster area in here at night. <laughs> what I do is I pile all the extra stuff on top of what I have on the front seat. On the front passenger seat, what I have right now is my cooler, my camera bag, and my battery. I always, always leave the driver's seat vacant because if for whatever reason I want to leave a place in the middle of the night, I want to be able to just jump in the front seat rip down my window cover over the front window and drive away. For me, that's a really important um, step in being safe, is to be able to get in my driver's seat and drive away without having to do a whole bunch of stuff. It's also one of the reasons why when I am camped, so it's not really camping, I'm spending the night someplace where I I'm only going to spend one night and it's not in a place where I am close by other people or a community, whatever. I don't leave anything outside that I wouldn't be willing to just drive away and leave. So I don't leave any chairs out. I don't leave the dog's dishes out. Nothing stays outside at night when I'm parked, especially in a place like this. 
this is going to be pretty safe. I'm, I'm not at all concerned about staying here. I know there's another group of people or another camper on the other side of the river there, on the other side of the road. I'm really close to Teslin at this point. If for some reason, just something weird happens and I feel like I need to leave this place, I can climb in the front seat and drive away. That's my biggest safety tip is especially if you're a woman traveling alone, is to always be able to leave quickly if you need to. If nothing else, take that away from this video because your safety is the most important thing. And if you don't feel safe in a place, don't stay there. I've stopped at several places today that I didn't feel comfortable about staying in for whatever reason, whether it's a gut feeling or whatever, it just, they just didn't sit right with me. So I left. At this place, I feel quite good about. I don't have any qualms about staying here, even though it's right next to the highway. And I, I know I can get out of here if we get a good dump of rain tonight. So I'm going to finish getting things set up in here for sleeping tonight. And then I'll take the dogs out for their quick pee run and get back in and settle in with a video because I managed to download a few episodes of the series I'm watching. And I'm just going to veg out. I don't need to make any dinner because I didn't eat that long ago. And if I get hungry, I've got some snacky stuff. So we'll be fine. Good morning. <laughs> so we spent a successful night beside the Alaska Highway parked on a little side road that doesn't seem to go anywhere. We had a, a good night. It did rain quite a bit overnight, so I'm thankful that I didn't stay at one of the places that I thought might be a little bit slippery if it was really wet. So I'm glad I did that. This place will be easy to get out of. I'm gonna start the car up now and get some of this condensation off of the windows while I get myself put together. You can see I haven't brushed my hair or anything, but I did make a coffee. Oh, and there's ravens gathering around the car now, <laughs> thinking they're going to get some scraps that we've left behind. Ravens are a big thing here in the Yukon. They will haunt you <laughs> if they think you're going to give them food. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to drink my coffee. I'm going to start the car. I'm always thankful when it starts. That's one of my biggest fears, I think, of camping in remote places by myself, especially here where there's no cell signal, is that, turn off the fan, is that my car won't start. We had a problem, because of me, um, when we were coming out of the cabin one year, it was minus 40 degrees Celsius, which just happens to be also minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the one temperature where both numbers are the same which is kind of weird. But anyway, uh, we had come out of the cabin that day and we stayed at a hotel in Watson Lake. And that hotel just happened to have a small laundromat. So I had done our laundry in the laundromat there and I had taken the big bag of clean clothes that needed to get dropped off back at the cabin before we left the area and I just put it on the floor in front of the driver's seat. Well, unbeknownst to me, and nobody came in to say anything about it, but the bag was sitting on the brake pedal and the brake lights on all night long at minus 40 degrees Celsius and Fahrenheit made the battery go dead. <laughs> so in the morning when we went out to leave, of course the truck wouldn't start. And being minus 40, the tow truck guy was getting a lot of calls for dead batteries. So we ended up having to hang around for quite a while. <sighs> Ever since then, I've always been really conscious of when I put stuff in the footwell where the driver's seat is, that I don't put anything on top of the brake pedal. I'm almost paranoid of it. So last night I threw my shoes down 
into the footwell and it was like I was checking and double checking to make sure that neither of them were even touching the brake pedal. Touching the brake pedal was not going to make the brake lights come on, but I'm just that cautious of that. So that's another little tip there for you. Don't put stuff in your driver's footwell and have it pushed down on the brake pedal because your battery will go dead. The dogs have been out. You can see them in the back there. There's Una. Freddy's lying down there washing his paws now. And Gracie is over there. You can't see her. Anyway, she's over there eating some food. Gracie's always eating. Oh, let me adjust this again here. Okay, there. So I'm going to get myself cleaned up and drive on to find a bathroom of some kind of outhouse or whatever. I've decided to um, not dig a cat hole this morning <laughs> and just drive on until I get to another rest area or Teslin. I'm not sure how far we are from Teslin, but I think we're pretty close and we're going to go to the library there today and use their Wi-Fi because that seems to be the only Wi-Fi between here and Whitehorse. As always, I'm not sure where I'm going to spend the night tonight. I don't have any destination in mind. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> Why does coffee always taste better when you're in the outdoors? It's weird, but it does. I'm pretty sure. I'm sure if they did a survey, they'd find that people say that coffee tastes better in the outdoors. It's just something. Coffee, outdoors, they just seem to go together. That's just my opinion. This was a good stop for the outhouse. It's just a rest area on the side of the road. There's quite a few of them along the Alaska Highway and you can stay overnight in most of them. I haven't seen any that have signs that say no overnight parking. There are so many free places that you can pull over and stay for the night or probably even a couple of nights. The bathroom here is, it's a, it's a pit toilet. Of course, there's not gonna be plumbing way at the heck in, in the middle of nowhere. So it's a pit toilet. So most of them are pit toilets or an outhouse. This one is really well maintained. It's big, so it's wheelchair accessible and it doesn't stink at all. That was always my thing as a kid was I was terrified of outhouses or pit toilets. I was sure there was some kind of monster down in there that was gonna come up and grab me while I was going to the bathroom. I've overcome that fear as an adult, <laughs> especially since at the cabin, that's what we have is an outhouse. But I do always carry hand sanitizer in the car, not just for using after using a public outhouse, but also after pumping gas. If you're handling a gas pump nozzle thing, who knows who touched it before you. And you know, you climb back in your car and you start eating your sandwich that you packed. That's pretty gross. So hand sanitizer is another thing you should always keep in your car camper. <laughs> Potholes are also a big thing here in the north. Potholes are created really easily when the ground freezes in the winter time. Anyway, let's get back on the road. You can see it's raining and as much as I had hoped to be able to stop and camp somewhere for more than just an overnight, I don't really want to do that in this crappy kind of weather. I seem to be cursed with car camping and rain these days. I just, <laughs> I don't know what it is. I looked at the forecast for this time period when I was planning this trip, sort of planning, and it looked like it was going to be pretty good. So I'm hoping this rain is not going to stick around and that eventually it's going to clear up and be beautiful and I'll be able to stop and stay in a few places for more than one night and not have to spend those nights all in my car. I would like to have a campfire. I have a little stove I want to show you. It's 
I have a really hard decision to make. I don't know if I should stay here or not. Now, I'll let you be the judge, okay? So, this is a forestry campsite. And, yeah, it's pretty nice. It's Morley Lake, I believe. Let me focus there. It's Morley Lake, I believe. And there are a few other campers here. One is a European overlander vehicle. And there's also a travel trailer and a truck. And the park truck was here as well. So he may just be checking in on people. But yeah, and there are outhouses. And you can see there's a picnic table back there. But it's just beautiful. It's just such crappy weather. I can put my little tent thing off the back of the car and be able to sit underneath that and get out of the rain. But I just don't know if I wanna just hang around in the rain. If I go into town, at least I'd be able to have some place dry and warm to sit. The dogs and the cat are fine in the car. They just curl up and go to sleep. They're not really too particular. <laughs> but. But yeah, it's just beautiful. I just, I don't know what to do. And I've got the nicest campsite. It's at the very end of the road. I think I'm gonna carry on just because sitting around in the chill is different from sitting around in an RV. If we had honey here, oh, this would be perfect. Could even get her in here. This is just like the perfect site. <sighs> bugs me. Find a beautiful campsite and it's just not nice weather to be sitting around. I mean, I'd sit around and I'd read and I can do some editing and I could even brought my crocheting with me, but it's just cold. <laughs> I'm being a wimp, I know. <laughs> but yeah, I think I'm going to carry on. But it's just so pretty. But I am going to bring the dogs out for a little bit of a walk. So we'll do that anyway. I may regret having brought them out. <laughs> We're gonna get back in the car all wet. Whoop, you got it wrapped around your leg, Una. What a pretty spot. And it's free. So yeah, that decides it. It's gotten quite windy since we arrived here and um, chilly. So much as I hate to leave this campsite uncamped in, I am going to carry on to Heslin and go hang out in your warm and cozy library. <laughs> but, <laughs> Look at that site. It's just perfect. Right on the lake. Yeah. I have to remember this one, marking it on my map. I'm gonna come back here when the weather's nice. Maybe even on my way home back to the cabin. You never know. So we're just getting into Teslin or Teslin area, and I'm really excited because they actually have cell signal here now. Woohoo! So I don't have to go and park outside the library in order to get a signal. There's some information signs here about the area. One about wildlife and the River Delta, the Nistulin River Delta. Some more about the people. Yeah, I put one of my stickers in this little roundabout thing here. Other people have been putting them on, so I'm gonna add mine too. Hello, Bracey. She always gets on my seat when I get out of the car. <laughs> Doing some work on the bridge that goes over this river or lake into Teslin. Looks like they're building a, either a new bridge? Must be.
happen to look up at the highway and who should go by at that moment but Dustin Porter from Destination Adventure which is the channel that I really enjoy watching and I'm actually a patron for and he's coming back from having gone all the way up to the Arctic Circle and his rig is pretty easy to identify he's got destination adventure on the side of it but yeah just kind of weird I met him last year in Watson Lake at the gas station there I had hoped he was gonna turn in so I could say hi again but he didn't so he and his I think it's his girlfriend who is from Japan have been on this journey up to the Arctic Circle and been watching those videos you should check out his channel he's really good but yeah just kind of interesting to have seen him twice so the gas station where I got my gas is a hotel RV park and restaurant the gas station where we usually stop when we are going from the cabin to Whitehorse whenever we make a trip up there I just stopped here and I grabbed a little pizza as well as a cup of coffee and I'm gonna go down to where the boats park it's kind of like a little park there's a, a bathroom there and there's a charging station for cars and I'm just gonna eat some lunch and download a couple more videos if I can and yeah we'll just see what there is to see down there it's right on the river so it's quite pretty but there's a lot of boats there and a lot of boys floating in the water <laughs> but we'll go down and check it out No overnight camping sign. I picked up a few stickers. I've started putting the ones for this trip on the back side of my box. The one there on the left that says welcome to the town of Watson Lake, I actually paid I think six dollars for. The one next to it was free at the visitor center. If I'd only had free ones at the visitor center, I probably wouldn't have bought the six dollar one. And the Yukon north of Ordinary is actually a podcast that I listen to on Apple Podcasts, whatever that's called. <laughs> and it's a podcast. They haven't put up any podcasts for a little while, but all of their podcasts are about the Yukon and stories about the Yukon. So it's kind of cool. So a bit of a change in plans. I went to the library in Teslin to use their Wi-Fi, hoping it was maybe faster to download stuff than the cell signal there. And Teslin, I mean, it's still in cell signal. I'm driving out of Teslin now. Um, but I decided not to stay in Teslin. There really isn't a whole lot there. The museum was closed. I did go to a gallery kind of wildlife museum thing. Um, it's free to go in, they do take donations, and it has a really nice gift shop attached to it. It's right next to the hotel, restaurant, gas station, right after you get off the bridge driving into Tesla. Definitely worth going to. It, beautiful, beautiful um, stuffed animals. Pretty much did everything there was to do in Tesla. <laughs> and although the weather was not bad, there really wasn't anywhere for me to stay, so I drove north some more and came to the Teslin campsite which was $20 a night right on the Teslin lake and I thought okay I can pay $20 a night to stay here set up my little awning and everything I'd still be within cell signal which would be nice but I thought for 20 bucks a night it did have free firewood though but I decided I'm just going to go on to Atlin. The next few days are not supposed to be too bad as far as weather goes. And Atlin is like a really cute little town. Very little. It's a place we almost moved to as well with the RCMP. And there is a campsite there in town for $10 a night. There's another campsite that I would like to go to that we stayed at many years ago when we were taking a trip up to Alaska 
on Surprise Lake. So I probably will spend a night at the town campsite tonight and then head out to Surprise Lake tomorrow. And whether I spend the night there or go back to the town campsite, who knows. But just to keep you up to speed with what's going on. I'm going to end this video here because it's getting way too long. So join me in the next video while I travel to Atlin, which is back in BC. It is a beautiful little town and you will love it. Don't forget, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more RVing and car camping tips, tricks and trips. Bye.